Welcome to episode 112 of... Wait a minute, I need to play the theme music. Welcome to episode 112 of George's Random Astronomical Object. Every episode, I run a random number generator to select random astronomical coordinates in the sky, and I then search for an astronomical object near those coordinates and talk about what makes the object so interesting to astronomers. So, I will now run the random number generator. The random number generator has returned the coordinates of 16 hours, 14 minutes, 22.5 seconds right ascension, and negative 60 degrees, 52 minutes, 7 seconds declination. This episode's coordinates point to a cluster of galaxies called the Norma Cluster. It would have been cool if this constellation was named after someone called Norma, such as, for example, Norma Jean Baker but instead the Norma Cluster is named after the constellation in which it is found, although technically it straddles the border between the constellation Norma and another one named Triangulum Australe. It would have been cool if the constellation Norma was named after someone called Norma, but instead the constellation's name is derived from the extended Latin phrase Norma et Regula, or the set square and the ruler. In other words, this constellation was supposed to represent the type of square used by drafts people for making technical diagrams. This is another idiotic constellation invented by the 18th century French astronomer and general weirdo Nicolas Louis de la Calle. And like many of his other idiotic constellations, it's located in the southern hemisphere and composed of a bunch of faint stars that are nearly impossible to see and could represent virtually anything you could imagine. Anyway, the Norma Cluster was originally found by George Abel working with Harold Corwin. George Abel was a 20th century expert at finding clusters of galaxies by spending enormous amounts of time staring at photographic plates, so a lot of clusters are named after him, and indeed the Norma Cluster is also known as Abel 3627. The discovery of the Norma Cluster was published in 1989, or six years after Abel's death, by Harold Corwin working with Ronald Olowen, although they both still credit George Abel as the lead author on the publication. The Norma Cluster is rather large. The estimated mass is about one quadrillion times the mass of the Sun. For reference, one quadrillion is 10 to the 15th power, or a 1 followed by 15 zeros. I had to look that up. This is roughly a thousand times the mass of the Milky Way. Around 300 galaxies have been identified as members of the cluster, but that number is probably much smaller than the actual number of galaxies in the Norma cluster for two reasons. First, the cluster is located at a distance of about 230 million light years or 70 megaparsecs, which means that it's going to be difficult to see many of the fainter or smaller galaxies in the cluster. Second, astronomers on Earth need to look through the plane of the Milky Way to see the cluster, and interstellar dust within the plane of our galaxy tends to obscure the galaxies within the Norma cluster. This is why the cluster was not discovered until the 1980s. The cluster also contains a huge amount of really hot X-ray emitting gas located in between the galaxies in the cluster. Many other clusters of galaxies contain this type of hot gas, but the Norma cluster is so massive that it is actually one of the brightest clusters in terms of its X-ray emission. However, despite the fact that astronomers really like studying the Norma cluster because it is such an unusually large cluster, this is not the most interesting thing about the Norma Cluster. <laughs> 
the Norma Cluster is potentially most notably known as part of a much larger object called the Great Attractor. At this point, if you've seen the movie Men in Black, you might be thinking of that one scene with the bouncing ball, although they seem to imply that the Great Attractor is a single individual that identifies as male, which never made sense to me. Anyway, in astronomy, the Great Attractor was someone, excuse me, something, that was initially hypothesized in the mid-1980s by people doing surveys of galaxies in the nearby universe who noticed that, on extremely large scales, galaxies were not moving as expected based on the expansion of the universe, but instead seemed to be gravitationally drawn towards some sort of much larger object that, as of that time, had not been identified. In the mid-1990s, people figured out that things were moving towards a large concentration of galaxies 50 quadrillion times the mass of the Sun in a location heavily obscured by the plane of the Milky Way that they named the Great Attractor. And the newly discovered Norma Cluster was identified as being located at the center of this much larger object. These and subsequent discoveries have had major implications for understanding how large-scale structures in the universe form. Galaxies are thought to have formed within a billion years after the Big Bang, but it seemed to take a couple more billion years for many of these galaxies to form gravitationally bound clusters. This is mainly because it takes time for gravity to affect things on really large scales, especially since the force of gravity does not move faster than the speed of light. So it's not possible to form very large gravitationally bound objects like clusters of galaxies right away. In the present, those clusters of galaxies are now forming into gravitationally bound superclusters. Our Milky Way is located within the gravitationally bound group of galaxies called the Local Group, and that group lies within the much larger structure called the Local Supercluster, which is centered within the Virgo Cluster. The Local Supercluster, as well as a few other nearby superclusters, are part of an even larger object called the Lania Kea Supercluster, which was named this because Brent Tully, who was the person who led the team that discovered the cluster, lives in Hawaii, and he probably thought it would be really cool to give this cluster a Hawaiian name. By the way, Lania Kea means immense heaven. All of the galaxies and groups and clusters of galaxies within the Lania Kea Supercluster are being gravitationally pulled into the supercluster center, and that is either the Norma Cluster itself or very near to where the Norma Cluster is located. You could therefore conclude that, in the grand scheme of things, the Great Attractor, including the Norma Cluster, is going to have an incredibly huge influence on our galaxy and our solar system. Although the timescales are so long that the Sun will have probably expanded to form a red giant and consume the Earth before transforming into a white dwarf so we won't be around to see what happens. So that summarizes my description of the cluster named Norma, and the location on the Earth's surface corresponding to the position of this cluster in the sky is in the Pacific Ocean about 1,400 kilometers offshore from Antarctica. This is a random part of the ocean that no one is attracted to, unlike the Norma cluster, so I'm not going to say anything else about it. The website for this podcast is www.randomastronomicalobject.com. You can visit the website to download episodes of the show, read information about the astronomical objects, view images of those astronomical objects, look up additional reference information, and send me random feedback. The audio was recorded and edited by George Bendo. The music is Immersion by Sasha Endy at www.sasha-endy.de and the sound effects are from the Freesound Project at www.freesound.org Thanks for listening. <laughs>